Okay, so in this part, I'm going to show you the uh, the soldering of the speed control wires for power and ground and the sense uh, motor wire, not sensor wire, but the motor wire from each pad to each ESC. And what I decided to do is it it's four of the same thing, so I've already done three of them. Uh, I'm just going to focus on doing the last one and try to show you how each one went. It's uh, pretty much just a matter of holding the ESC down on the arm where I know it's going to be final resting place with these zip ties. Um, wrapping the wire over to the appropriate pad and cutting it to length, stripping the end a little bit, tinning it up, and soldering it in. So we just have the last one to do there and then they'll all four be soldered up and I can move on to soldering the flight controller and getting it installed. Alright, so this is kind of hard to do keeping it in the in the shot, but I'm going to do my best. So actually on this one you can see that the uh, pad closest there we go. Took a while. Anyway, the pad closest to the standoff, that's my positive motor lead. And in this case, I'm lucky that it actually the positive motor lead is coming out on that side of the uh, ESC. So it'll route over there pretty easily, followed by the ground lead, negative. Um, and then I'll just strip the signal wire and the power wire from the servo plug that I've already cut off. Um, just get those soldered into the uh, BEC circuit and the motor number four pad. So, try to get going on that. So you can see what I'm doing. speed control where I want it. This is gonna make a little bit of an S bend. This doesn't is a great video but just holding it on there and I'm gonna take my snips and cut it off right at the edge of the pad. Okay. Now this uh, soft silicone jacket on these wires I've been able just to pinch a little bit of it off so I'll try that or, I'm sorry that's on the smaller wires I'm going to go ahead and use my cutters just to uh, score it just a little tiny bit just to get it going and then it's super easy to pinch off give it a little twist Tip. Now it's going right on that first pad there. And what I've been doing is using the pliers to help me hold it where I wanted it to be. And just touch it lightly and as it should melt into the solder already there, hold it down. Alright, and now I'll do that and now again with the uh, negative wire. Bring it around, put a little S bend in it. Get that out of there. Okay, so it's going right there flush with the negative pad. Same thing, score the end just a little bit, make it easier to pull off, okay, off, give it a 
twist and tin that one up And again, just set it on the pad, heat it up, melts in real quick. Done. So for that one, pretty much I just separate the three wires out of this uh, servo connector. And here I'm just going to be using the uh, the red one for the power coming from the BEC circuit on the speed control. And the yellow will be the uh, motor signal wire. The, uh, the brown one, the ground, I'm not really going to be using that. Cut it off pretty short here at the end and uh, like I've done with the other three. And I'm just going to dab them with a little uh, liquid electrical tape when I'm all done. started here cut in between them separate them out all right cut that ground lead kind of short dab that with the electrical, liquid electrical tape, like I said earlier. Alright, now looking at those pads. Okay, so the BEC circuit, so the red wire is going to go to the inside, closest to the QR code, and the motor lead, the yellow one, is going to come to the outside. So, I don't know, it might be easier if I do the motor lead first and then the power lead second. Just cut that about where I need it. These wires are really fine. And they, these are the ones where you can just pretty much pinch the uh, pinch the uh, insulation right off. A little solder on that iron to start the tin. Be careful, it starts to melt the uh, insulation a little bit. Just break out the multimeter here and make sure we don't have anything crossed after doing that one. So between uh, positive and negative, should not get continuity. Nope. And that one being motor four. Let's put it one on motor four pin and yep, we're good there. Uh, make sure we don't get any continuity between any of these 
the BEC circuit and these other wires so I didn't cross over any any solder from pad to pad no, all good and from the uh, 12 volt output for the ESC and the uh, BEC input which would be 5 volts coming back from, from the ESC and no continuity there either so we should be good so again as we look at the quad motor 1 is back here the VEC pad from motor 1 is actually what comes over here to the uh, motor pin area and feeds the this is on the nucleus board so from BEC uh, pad from motor 1 feeds over here to the pins, motor pins, and there's a BEC pin here that's going to power the NASE 32 directly. And then from motor 4, this BEC pad runs back over here to this side and provides you with uh, 5 volts to run uh, accessories like a LED array or something like that. So we'll show that that one's coming in LED 5 volt there's my BEC pad right there So shows where that one's going cool so got all the wires or all the motors uh, soldered in plug in the power LEDs still light on the board So those LEDs are all soldered onto the nucleus board already. And it might be hard to see, but each one of these speed controls has an LED within it as well. So we can just see that they're getting they're getting power. It's on the bottom anyway. Let's see. Kind of yeah, kind of see in there. And that little one in there too. Can cover that up. All right, so we're good to go. Keep working. Get that flight controller, all the pins soldered onto it, and we'll be one step closer. All right, so like I said, now I'm at the point with the uh, all the ESCs and motors soldered up together and then soldered to the nucleus board. I'm at the point of getting the flight controller ready to go. So this is the flight controller, NASE 32, or NASE 32. Basically this is the little computer that is going to interpret my transmitter stick movements into the flying movements of the quad that I want it to do. Um, there are sensors and a little microprocessor on here, I do not know which of those is which so I'm not even going to try but uh, one cool thing is it does have a little USB port there and that's uh, so I can plug it into the computer and set it up using clean flight it's got some uh, status LEDs on there so once I've applied power to it you can kind of see what's going on um, we got some area right here the two pads and then the one two three that's going to connect to my receiver I believe and then over here you've got all your uh, different connections for up to six different servos or six different motors um, I'm only going to be using four so we're only going to end up using four of these slots and I'm going to try to um, use even less because honestly we really only need the signal wire for three of the motors and then the other motor is going to be motor number one in this case is going to be providing the signal wire the ground and the five volt power to uh, power up the flight controller and all of that is going to be coming right off of these pins right here so I just need to try to get creative on how I solder this together there's a little golden arrow on this board and that is normally pointing towards there's the golden arrow right there 
that normally points towards the front of the quad. However, when you do that, you end up with the USB port back here. And that could be a little hard to access considering you're going to have battery leads possibly in the way, uh, video transmitter possibly in the way, hang, hanging under the top deck. So, luckily, Clean Fight does allow you to rotate the board however many times you want and you just account for that in the software so now I have the uh, USB port poking out the side and easy access for programming um, so depending on how I get creative with the wiring or the soldering of the pins and how I can run the wires uh, yeah, it's probably going to end up going this way so that's 90, 90 degrees turned 90 degrees to the to the right yeah I think that that'll probably work best because that puts that puts the motor pins right here by the motor pin area and on the other side it puts our buzzer and VBAT pads right up next to where the buzzer and V battery uh, pins will be soldered to the nays there uh, so that puts my receiver leads coming out the front, although I can make them as long as I need to and put the receiver anywhere. Um, yeah. I don't know. Might even be able to put the receiver underneath. Who knows? I'll try that out when it comes time for that. So, time to experiment a little bit with pin placement on this thing. It comes with a bunch of different pin headers so you have the ability to uh, make that creative choice there's a set of uh, angled pins there or if I don't want to angle them off the board if I want them to go straight I just use these a bunch of these 3 by 2s and then you got this 5 by 2 and that would go on the front of the board where the receiver pins would go off of um, but like I said, I'm probably going to try just soldering the wires directly to the pads to go to the receiver. So, time to start uh, planning this out. And uh, next time you see it, I'll have them at least set in there the way I want them to work. And um, we'll go from there.